freedom. I open my wardrobe and stare inside. A reassuring laundry smell wafts over me. So many clothes are squashed beneath the hanging rail, so they're not really hanging at all. I tug a clean t-shirt from the shelf. As I turn to find my jeans, a car horn sounds right outside my window. I rush over and peer down. Two men are talking loudly on the street outside. Armit wanders into my room. Dad's not back yet, he says. Okay, I yawn. I want Armit to get out of my bedroom, but instead hear myself saying, I'll make extra egg flatbreads. He'll be hungry when he gets here. I'll help, says Armit. If you can do it, then it must be pretty easy. It's hard, actually. I just make it look easy. Get out the flour from the cupboard by the fridge. I get dressed and wander into the kitchen. How are you already covered in flour? Armit stands up holding a blue paper bag. There's a dusty white patch on his chest. Someone left the packet open yesterday. He tilts his head to one side and raises his eyebrows. Okay, okay, but assistants don't normally talk back, so put that down and get the frying pan. Armit sighs, but goes to look for a frying pan. I try to imagine my friends making their own breakfasts. Perhaps it's a good job we live so far away and I end up visiting them, not the other way round. At lunchtime, there is still no sign of Dad. Usually, if he spends the night away for work, Mila is with us and Dad calls her if he knows he's going to be late. I realise, with a little buzz of excitement, that this will be a really good argument for me to be having a mobile phone. What should we eat, says Armit. Hmm... We have Dad's flatbreads and we can eat the rest of Bella's food. Armit perks up. Can I finish the chicken? If you load the dishwasher. Deal. When do you think Dad will be back? Definitely by dinner time, but more likely in the next five minutes, I tease. So you'd better finish up that chicken or else he'll want to share it. After lunch, Armit disappears to his room. There is a sudden burst of music, and then the song changes as the new one begins. I hear Armit join in. It's almost impossible to tell his voice apart from the artist's. Turn it down, I shout, but only because that's what Dad would have said. I like it loud. I sit on the bed and spread out my fingers, turning them to make the silver nail polish sparkle in the daylight. It's the only clue to the day, my day at Bella's. Dad will make me take the polish off my fingernails straight away. He probably won't notice my toes for a couple of days. There's also the huge ketchup stain on Armit's t-shirt from the best burger and fries ever, made by Bella's cook. Normally, Mila would deal with things like that, but Armit's seeing if leaving his t-shirt in a screwed up heap on the floor will miraculously have the same effect. Once One thing's for sure, I'm not going to wash it. I look at my bookshelf and pull out a book I haven't read for a while. I make a soft nest from my pillows and sheet and settle down to read. There's no homework or school to interrupt, just Armit wailing high notes in the background. After a couple of hours, the traffic noises are louder. I guess it must be rush hour, although it's usually more like don't rush hour because you're going to be sat in the traffic for twice that long anyway. I go to the sitting room and open up the balcony door. A wave of warm, damp air washes over me. Rain drips from the edge of the balcony above, making a dark line along the pale floor tiles. I step outside and peer over the balcony rail to see if any cars are waiting to drive into the underground car park. Nothing. A raindrop splashes on the back of my neck. I wander back inside and close the door. Armit is in the sitting room. Any sign of Dad, he asks. No, I just wanted to see if it was still raining. You could have looked out the window. Why isn't he back yet? I don't know. The news said there'd been a lot of flooding. Maybe he's got stuck somewhere. I feel a slight flutter in my stomach. Armit does have a point. Dad is never very late home. Well, never more than an hour or so. He's never been a whole day late. I switch on the TV and flick to News 24. They're talking about pollution. I flick through to find another news channel. There is a woman talking about crops being damaged by the rain and about how bad the flooding has been in rural areas. Do you think he's okay? Armit asks. I'm sure he's fine. Normally he'd just call Mila, but Mila's not here. I wish Mila was here, says Armit. Maybe we should use some of the money Dad left for a taxi and buy some dinner. Armit looks interested. Can we choose anything we want? As long as it's not something stupid. I'm starting to feel like a mixture of Mila and Dad now. 
I want to feel like Lola again. I glance down at my fingernails. Don't let dad see those, Ahmed grins. He will go banana ramas. I smile. He will definitely go banana ramas. Okay, let's go. Yes, dinner, dinner, dinner. Ahmed starts doing his excited dance in the hallway. We step outside and the warm air envelops my face. I smell wood smoke and incense. There is also a delicious aroma of spices and food cooking. Chicken and rice, says Ahmed. No, wait, burger. Round the corner from our apartment is the old city. The streets are narrow and wires crisscross overhead. Wires for telephones, electricity, internet. It's like a separate wire city above our heads. Back on the street, people crisscross, funneled between shops and storm drains. I put Armit to the side of the street to let a cycle rickshaw pass. There is a sound of chisels tapping on stone, rickshaw bells tinkling, shopkeepers shouting to each other. A man hurries past with an enormous woven disc on his head. On top of it are four chickens. Dad tells me that mum loved walking down these streets with me, chatting and buying things. I wish I could remember. My only memories of mum are from when she sat on the floor next to my bed and sang while she stroked my head until my eyes began to close. A few metres ahead, steam rises from a huge metal pan. I want some of that, says Armit. We're not buying street food, Armit. We'll go to the restaurant where dad bought takeaway. But you said I could have anything I want. Anything you want from there. While I pay for our order, Armit wanders next door to the kite shop. It's easy to see what every shop sells because once the shutters are pulled up, their insides spill out onto the streets, letting the shopkeepers reel you in like fish. New delivery today. Come and try it. Best quality. Come on, I call, reeling him back out. Let's go and eat it while it's hot. Arma is instantly by my side. Let me carry the bags, he offers. After the noise and smells of the street, the apartment seems especially quiet. So we eat dinner watching TV. Afterwards, Armit plays some games on the tablet. I find it hard to concentrate on reading.